So in the next part of this video, we are going to create the cylinder block and the cylinder head and potentially a couple of spark plugs and we'll go from there. So to do that, what we're going to do is create a new um, file and we're going to call it, we're going to save this one as cylinder block save that now again the way I'm approaching this is the way you might do it you're not sure that you're gonna end up with a an assembly or where these parts might be and you're gonna to want to bring them all together at the end so I'm intentionally not preempting all that I want to make sure that you can see once you create parts you can actually bring them together and they are usable and still parametric and and modifiable so then what we're going to do is we're going to create a part and we're going to create a body. We're going to create a sketch on the XY plane. And I'm just going to zoom out there a little bit. And my sketch, I'm going to actually do a cylinder block with two cylinders in it, I think. And I'm going to make those two equal. And I'm going to make them symmetrical around this. And then the outside of my cylinder block is going to be a shape like this. And I'm going to add some radii in the corners. So once we have those radii, I'm going to make all of those equal. So I'll select that one. Select that one, select that one, select that one, and say equal. And then I can make them all um, the size that I want. Now, from this perspective, I'm going to do it as a diameter. And I'm going to make it 51, oh, not 501, 51. And so now our piston was 50. Actually, it should probably be bigger than 51 because we need some piston rings as well. So let's go with 56. And that will do that. And then my centers here, I do believe... I do believe my centers were um, 50 plus 25, so I'm going to say 75 millimeters. And then I am going to make this dimension, actually I'm going to take this and this and that point and make those symmetrical. That way we know we're centered over there so I can bring that in and you should see everything comes in together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the same distance from the center to that edge and the center to that edge, center to that edge. And we should be good. So if I take this point and dimension it, and I make that 40 and then I'm going to take this point to this point dimension that and make that 40 and we should have what we need there and then I need to give this radius Strain, and that's going to be just 10 I think will be plenty and now it's fully constrained so I can close that and get that in the center create pad and my pad has to be a little bit taller 
I think the pad needs to be 50, 60. Let's go with 60. So that's my basic cylinder block. But I need to have some fins around it, I think. Would be good. So to do that, I'm going to just I'm gonna rename this guy to Rename this guy to Cylinder Block. Oh, good grief. There we go. To Cylinder Block. And again, I, would, I need to create these fins. So I'm going to do that by creating a sketch. I'm going to do it on this plane, on my YZ plane. I'm going to turn my model back on. And I'm just going to freehand this for a minute. I'm just going to freehand something that goes like this. that guy so remember this guy shows me the sectional view I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit I'm gonna make all of those horizontal so I think our fins need to be horizontal and make this guy vertical Make all these vertical. And then I'm going to make this and this aligned. And this and this are going to be aligned. And now, if I slide that back and go back to here, maybe. Make that vertical. It doesn't actually need to be because it's not going to cut anything, but just so we can. Um, I'm going to make this, this, and this equal. And then I am going to make this and this equal. So now we have that spread out nice and evenly. And then I'm going to leave that. I'm not actually going to fully constrain it yet. I'll come back to it. I'm going to close that for now. Now what I want to do is to create another sketch in the XY plane. Go back here. Switch on my model again. I'm just going to create this guy, like that, and that guy again so we can see it, and I'm going to say this guy and this guy, and have a radius, this guy and this guy, this guy and this guy, one more, and the final one, and then of course that one. That one, that one, and that one are all equal. And I'm just going to stop there. And we'll see if I turn off the cylinder block. Turn off my pad. Now you can see I have two sketches. And I'm going to do the... Sweep selected sketch along the path. So I'm going to select the sketch, sweep that along a path, and I'm going to turn off my pad for that. And then I'm going to select my path and say OK. 
And now you'll see I have fins. And now we'll just go in and constrain everything just so that we get it roughly what we want. I, I think that's fine. It looks, they look like fins to me. You could have more or less, whatever you want to do. But it looks pretty good to me. I'm, I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my sketch. For my subtractive pipe. I'm going to go in here. And we are going to dimension a few bits. So we know those are all equal. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change the dimension right now. I'm just gonna see what they are. So again, we're we're doing this from the perspective of we're designing as we go. I don't have a sketch of this on the table that I'm working from. I'm literally doing this as we go. I think that's a it's a good thing to do. It's kind of more realistic for what would normally happen. And so I'm just arbitrarily accepting these dimensions. I'm going to hit that one there. I'm just going to move that up a little bit. My bad. Uh, that guy. That guy. I am going to make that one 20 because no reason not to and we got three degrees of freedom so I need to do something from there to there to get it squared away Say okay to that one and I'm gonna align this one and this one And then I have one degree of freedom left, which is to this line from this line. So we can just, actually we can just take that, go with that, say OK. Now I have a fully constrained sketch, so I can play with that shape if I want to. And then I'm going to fully constrain this one. So first thing we should do is make it symmetrical. So we're cutting out the same amount from each one. Then we want to give this a dimension. And we can say 9 is fine. And then we're going to give this a dimension. And finally, we're going to give this a dimension. And there we have it. So I could spend time and, and decide exactly how big I want those things. OK, so now I have that all constrained. I can just go with that. You can see everything is even now. And that is the beginning of my Cylinder head. I think I'm going to put some four holes in there as well, just for fun. So we'll go back to this drawing. And we'll just go here, and we're going to plop in right on that point. We'll just make some holes. And these will all be equal. And of course, they'll go all the way through. And that one, that one, that one, and that one, all equal. And I give one of them a dimension. We're going to make that an 8 millimeter hole. And we'll close that, and there we have it. So there is my cylinder block. My studs would go right through there. Hold it all down. You can probably put some in the middle too, just to keep it all nice and flat. But I'm not going to do that for now. I'm just going to let it be. Okay, the next part. So 
I still have my cylinder block part highlighted at the cylinder block which is the this piece and I'm going to create a new body and I'm going to rename this body as the cylinder head if I could spell cylinder there we go and so what I want to do is I want to create a cylinder head I'm going to do a sketch on that XY plane again and turn that model back on so I can see it and then of course my cylinder head is going to look something like my cylinder block. Notice I didn't start the drawing on this face because we would have a problem. And also notice that it's on the XY plane, so it's not going to show up right on top of there right away unless I offset it. And I really don't need to offset it, but I can if I want to. So we are going to create some radii. If you remember, those radii were 10. So we want them to line up, so we're going to do that. Now I put the radii on first before I do this symmetry piece. Otherwise, you do it to the points of the rectangle, and then they disappear when you put the radii on, and then you no longer have that symmetry. And right away, I can see there is something not quite right because it looks like I have a bigger gap one side than the other. So I'm going to figure out what's going on there. Ah, could be because the radii are not the same yet. So let's do that. Let's make all those radii the same. That's better. Now we've got the same gaps all around. And while we're here, we can dimension that radius. It's going to be 10, which is the same as the radius on the head. And then we want to make it the exact same as this guy. So we're going to say, I'm going to just close that, pad that. We're going to make it. Let's make it 35. How does that look? 35. Same. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a drawing this way on this plane. XZ plane. I'm turn that model back on. We're going to halve that model. And then we're going to create a line that goes from here to here. And then we're going to create a radius that goes here to here, and a line that goes from there to there. Zoom in a little bit. And then we're going to make this line. 25 and we're going to make this radius 25 we're going to make this line Here backwards is going to be oh, 
75 divided by 2. And we've got three degrees of freedom. Um, why do we have degrees of freedom there? Because I don't know where that radius is. So I want to go from there and down. I'm going to make that 15. There we go. And then I'm going to take that line. I'm going to give that a dimension. Say, OK. And now I'm going to, last thing I am going to do is. Dimension from there to the end of there. And we got it. We're going to close that. We are going to. So now we have the shape that we want to cut out for the top of the cylinder head. We're just going to create, if we use this button here, we can go, you see these go blue. If I press it again, it goes white. When they're blue, they're construction lines. So I'm just going to drop a construction line from that point and I'm going to go up here until that little guy comes on so it's vertical then I'm going to close that I'm not going to constrain that guy I'm going to turn off my pad I'm going to do a revolve with this and when it says where do I want to revolve it hold on one second we don't want to do that let me just turn it this way I'm going to turn off that pad again. <laughs> this time I'm going to capture that. I don't want to just get an edge, I want to get the whole sketch. So we've got sketch four. I'm going to do a revolve. And we drop this down. You can see that construction line one. That was our construction line. And that gives us this piece here. And I'm going to say OK to that. I'm going to select that domey shape, hit the mirror, say OK. And now I've got two domes, and they're perfectly matched over top of my two cylinders. So that's basically my cylinder head. What I want to do now is I want to put some radii on there, just to, just for some aesthetics. We're going to do that. So we're going to let's just pop that down there. We'll select this edge. I'm going to hit radius. And we're going to increase that to look something like what we want. That's okay. And now I have my cylinder head. And again, I could do with some fins, but I think this time I'm going to do fins that go this way. Um, we also probably want a couple of pads in here for my spark plugs to go in. So let's draw those now. That's going to be on the XY plane. Turn the model back on. There we go. And I'm going to draw off my construction lines. I'm going to draw a couple of pads here. This is where my spark plugs are going to go, so I want a couple of flats in there first. And do one there. Now I could just do one and then mirror it, but in this case I think I'm going to do two. And I'm just going to make them even, or equal I should say. Give them a diameter. Let's say 25. And then we're going to make this and this and this symmetrical. So they pop in there. And then I want to make 
this dimension 75 because that's my centers and say okay and now I have two pop that up there. I have two circles that are here but I don't want them to be there I want them to be on top of this guy and go downwards or start somewhere inside this guy and go upwards either way will work but I don't want to go from here and up because that's going to make a hole all the way through. This is just for a flat so that we got somewhere for our um, spark plugs to sit. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to offset that sketch. We'll say the sketch. We'll say attachment. We'll say position. And in the Z plane. And let's just run it all the way through the top. And I'll bring it. 35 was the top of that. So that'll be cool. And then we'll go here. And we're going to make these a pocket. We can pocket down a little bit further than that, maybe. Say, so, okay. And those are the spaces where my spark plug holes are going to go. So now I could just create two holes in there. And but what we actually want is two threaded holes. So so to do that, we are going to go into the fastener. We're going to go into the fastener workbench and we'll create two threaded holes. How about that? So let's pop in the fastener workbench. It's called fasteners. First time you load it up, it takes a little while. And we are going to tap some holes. Okay, so we're going to head to the fasteners workbench and we're going to use this tap. I pulled down my, you can see my cylinder head is still the current body. So I'm going to hit the tap, Boop. and if you look below there, you can see where the tap has been created. And then we're just going to position it. So what we'll do is we'll pop in here. We're going to make it the size we want it to be, which is going to be an M20. So it's going to be a bit bigger. We will show the screw thread, just so we can see what we're talking about. And then we're going to position it. We want to go 37.5 to the right and we want to go up here 35 I think yeah and that does go all the way through but I think what we're going to do is make it just a little bit longer so that it's sticking through a bit further yeah there you go, you see it sticking through in the bottom there a bit further. And then all we're going to do is we'll go back to our part design. And we're going to select this guy. We're going to hit Boolean operation. And we are going to say it's a cut operation. And there, if you look, we now have a screw thread that is ready for our spark plug. And I'm going to let you guys do the other one. I'm not going to go through all that because this video is going to be really long if I go through and do everything. Um, I may go in and do it uh, off the video so we have two threaded holes. But for now, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to go back to this part and I am going to create a new body. This new body is going to be called spark plug. And I'll be honest with you, I'm having a lot of fun with this guy. I enjoy creating parts and design as we go. 
I think it's much more fun. And hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. I'm going to pop a spark plug in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create that by just drawing a piece that goes like this. Come out here, go up here, back across here. Up a little bit, come in at an angle, back to the middle, up a little bit, left, down. Hopefully you can see that it looks like a half a spot plug. And I'm going to just dimension some stuff here. So I'm going to give this a dimension. We know that's going to be 20 for my thread. And I thought that got horizontal but it didn't I mean the vertical but it didn't this also should be a horizontal and we can dimension out from here let's say that's 20 so this guy should be it's a bit bigger than that Don't like that There we go, and then we're going to make that guy. Uh, actually, I'm going to do this guy and this guy are now going to be vertical. This guy is going to be vertical. And then I'm going to bring that guy in a little bit. Horizontal, come in like that. That looks good. And I need a dimension from here to here because that's going to be the length of our thread. It's more than that, but that's good. For now, we're going to have a dimension that goes. Way. We're going to have a dimension that goes from here, goes here, let's call it 10. And a dimension that goes on that straight part there, call that 5. So this is going to be 4, I think, for now. We're going to give this a height. That's going to be 11. this a dimension, we'll zoom in there, we'll give that a dimension here, we'll call that 3.5, and I think we've got one degree of freedom left, and that's probably this guy that we don't have a height for, and we'll call that 85 for now fine and we'll close that and what we're going to do is we're just going to create a revolve right there so I'm just going to create a revolve and I'm going to say okay I'm going to go here I'm going to turn off my cylinder head so now you can see the beginning of my spark plug and what it's what it's looking like and we can make some modifications to that to make it look more like a spark plug. And again, uh, we'll do that in just a second here. So now we're going to make the sketch look a little bit more like what we want. I can do, so these spark plugs typically have like a bumpy surface here. So I could make that a bumpy surface, <laughs> a bumpy surface. We can just make it whatever we want it to be. I think our length is a little long. I think we're going to make that this long instead. I think that looks more realistic. And 
we are going to make this a bumpy surface. So how do we do a bumpy surface? We can certainly do it with some radii, I think. Let's do that. Let's go from here. We'll go bumpy surface, bumpy surface, something like that. going to bumpy surface it will come out of there again we're just freehanding this because it's just a look it's just a look the way we want it to it's not I'm not trying to replicate a spark plug at all but I'm going with the bumpy surface on this one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that over to here. And I'm just going to trim those bits in the middle. Trim that guy back if I'm getting there. Now I'm starting to get a bumpy surface the way I want it to look. So I can bring this guy over here a little bit. And I can bring that guy over to there maybe. Is that the right bumpy surface? I don't know. Let's do this. Let's take that and that. Let's make those coincident. And then just close that and see what that's starting to look like. Yeah, that's a bumpy surface, all right. So now I can go back into my sketch. Go back in my bumpy surfaces. And... Going to bumpy surface some more. Like I said, I'm just freehanding it just to make it look a bit like something. I'm not intending it to be super accurate in any way, shape, or form. Of course, I could dimension it all if I wanted to. I really don't want to because it's a representation. So let's not let's not worry about it too much. And then I'm just going to cut all those pieces out from in there. Trim it all, trim. I can't zoom in because it's not trimming the right bits. Trim, 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 trim. Shift, shift that up. Press that wrong button. Trim, trim, trim. And now it should be a bumpy surface. So if we close that, now we got a bumpy surface kind of representation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do another sketch. And we're going to do it on this plane here. Say OK. And I can bring it back to the middle, turn on my. Just going to close all these guys down so that's not so far away in that part. Turn my part back on, zoom back out. Let's bring it to that. And then I'm going to drop in a hexagon. I'm going to put it in the center. And I'm going to bring it out to here. Just snick it past. Then I'm going to go with another one. I'm going to go out here. This one could equally be a circle. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to pocket that. And that's a bit 
small on the inside, so we're going to have another look. It's chopping out the wrong bit, so I'm just going to cancel that. I'm going to go back into my sketch, get back in the middle again. I'm chopping out the wrong bit, so I've got to drop that off. We're going to make this one bigger. We're going to make this one bigger. And then set close. And now I should be able to pocket. And reverse. And say through all. And there I now have a, a nut, basically. So okay to that. We'll go back into our fasteners. This time we're going to get die. So we're going to create this with a die. And we're going to go down here. We're going to make that an M20. And we are going to change our placement. We're going to move it in the Z direction. Up to close to there. And we'll say show thread. And we'll say OK to that. And now we'll go back into our part design. Select our M20. Do our Boolean. Say cut. And there we have that part of our spark plug. And of course, with a spark plug, there's normally a little guy in the middle. Um, so we need, to, we need to make that. Just again, for representation purposes. So I'm going to do that with this plane. OK. Turn on my part again. Back to here. Shift that up. Let's make a piece that goes, let's say, about this long, I guess. Comes out, goes up. Comes out, goes up. Back this way. Down here to there. And let's just make this guy horizontal just to tidy it up make this guy vertical make this guy horizontal if you can hear in the background a meowing sound that is my cat he's hungry for his dinner he's got 10 minutes to wait and he can meow he likes I'm not doing his dinner yet so that's the electrode in the middle. So let's let's take a look. We'll see what it looks like. I'm not too worried about constraining that. We're gonna do a revolve, and there it is. And then finally, I want a little piece that sticks down the side there, don't I? Because that's how spark plugs work. So let's do another sketch. Let's do it also in that XZ plane. Let's turn the model back on. And I'm just going to freehand this part in too. So it normally comes from here somewhere, drops down here, goes under here. Ooh. I see what I did wrong there. This needs to come over this way a little bit. Maybe I'll zoom in a bit. Bring that over there. Maybe make our spot gap a bit bigger. Drop that guy in there. And then we'll push that guy up there a little bit. Let's go into this. That's that. 
Okay, we're going to get rid of that constraint. We're going to just push that line up there. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to say this one and this one should be coincident. And this one should be horizontal. And I think if we go with that, I'll just put a little radius in here because, again, is a representation. But I like to I like to do things that look cool, so <laughs> we're gonna call that a day. Close that. And then we're gonna make that a pad. We're gonna do it symmetrically. Let's take a look at it from the side here. Oh, it's way too wide. So we're gonna just make it a bit thinner. How's that? That doesn't look too shabby. So we'll say okay to that. And of course, you should be constraining all of this as you go. I'm not constraining it just for the purposes of time. I don't want to use up all the time going through that, but it's easy to constrain these parts. You know how to do it. I've showed you how to do it a number of times. So that's easy. Uh, finally, I want to put a little thread on here because it's normally a threaded part. And so I'm going to go back to my fasteners going to put another die in. Let's go with that die. Boop. And this one is 8 mil if you remember. I'll just go here, select M8. And I'm going to select show my threads. And I just need to reposition it. So placement, position, Z. Zoom it up there until it pops out the top. I really want it to not go all the way inside here. So I'm going to just keep going up until I can see the end of it pop out. There it is. I'm going to come down a little bit. I think that's fine for what I want. So I'm going to go back into my part design and I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to do a Boolean operation. I'm going to cut. Say OK. And now I have a screw thread on the top as well. So that's basically my spark plug. That's how I'm going to leave it. And Hopefully you can see now, if I start turning these parts back on, you can see that we are going to have a cylinder block and a cylinder head. cylinder block so there's my cylinder block so we're gonna have a cylinder block and if I turn the cylinder block off we have a cylinder head and a spark plug so we've got all of those things that we can assemble now I actually should put the stud holes into the cylinder head but again for time purposes I might do it offline but you guys need to uh, take care of that so you want to put those stud um, holes in there and a little flat for that nut to go on. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, consider subscribing, and don't forget about our Patreon. I apologize for the cat meowing, the dog panting, and the other dog walking around the room, which you can hear going click, 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 click throughout the video. I thought it was kind of amusing, but a little bit annoying at the same time. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Um, Next one, we will be putting things together. Uh, I wanted to make all the parts first, and I thought it would be good to show some screw threads, etc., in this particular video. So hopefully you've enjoyed it, and we'll get on and do the assembly one next.